Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Drawn to Life. Yo, Bartleby, the mayor sent us to his house, but it's covered in darkness. Yeah, do you think the creator could clear it away? In the last part, we cleared the second level of World 3 and got Bubba's, uh, Tubba's brother back, Bubba, as well as got some trees for the beach, which is honestly kind of pointless in the long run because that doesn't really help the village at all. It just helps the mayor and Mari. Ah, the selfish leaders. <laughs> just kidding. So let's clear the darkness around from Tora and Bubba's future. How? Tora. Huh, no, that's uh, that's Xenoblade 2, Kyle. You may have just been playing that between recordings, but come on, man. Uh, Tubba and Bubba's house, so we can clear that all out. Yeah, I've been playing Xenoblade 2 a lot recently, uh, about as much as Final Fantasy XIV. And, uh, well, pretty decently far in, level 39. I I'd roughly sound probably a third of the way through the game. Although uh, uh, the chapter numbers would say otherwise. All right, what do you two think? This place looks awesome. Bartleby, could you come thank the mayor for us? Uh, could you thank the mayor for us, rather? Bubba, let's check out the inside. All right, let's go meet back with him at Secret Beach. I, have, I think the reason I made a jump cut there is because I accidentally meandered the wrong way because I misread Secret Beach for some reason. Hello, Bartleby. Tubba said thanks. How nice of him. I'll go see how they're doing. Hi, Bartleby. My dad just gave me a bunch of chores to do. Crazy Barks was chasing some of the Raposa around. And Cookie is still fighting with Isaac. What's Joey been doing? Is he still searching for treasure? Uh... We should tell him about the beach. Bartleby, find Joey and invite him here. I bet he's digging up the North Beach. <laughs> Joey better not dig up the be this beach looking for treasure. Yeah, that would be kind of irresponsible. Mind you, where did he find the shovel? Also, he head up there. That's actually where Crazy Barks is. And, well, he, he says something about standing on his rock in one giant word. That's for certain. A secret beach. And Mario wants to meet there. This is awesome. I'll go see her now. Uh, Heather, you can't come. Keep digging for treasure. I'll be back later. No. And she went anyway. <laughs> uh, let's go check up on those two because uh, something silly is bound to happen knowing them. Hello. Hey, you. Oh, that's adorable. So what do you think of the speech? Uh, it seems nice. So, have you found any treasure? Nah, how's your training going? It's been tough. The villagers fight a lot. I wish they would remember how much the creator has done for us. Hey, Joey, how do you think the creator sees us? Um... What if we lived in a white box with two windows? You're getting a bit too accurate here. And the box had buttons and a magic wand. You know too much. And the creator used that to examine our lives and control what we do. Okay, we're reaching some weird levels of meta here. You need, you need to stop. What do you think? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yes. <laughs> Appease the fool, make it not know. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, what were you about to do there? Heather! Oh, you, you got rid of a good moment. Heather! And Bartleby. Uh, Bartleby, we were uh, trying to think of an idea to unite the villagers. Remember to help them remember everything the creator, creator has done for us. How about a statue? The creator could design it, and it would remind everyone how far we've come. I like that idea. There was probably a page for it in the Book of Life. Bartleby, could you explore the Angler Island and find uh, Angler Isle and find the village statue page? Maybe that'll bring the villagers together. I think that's the first time, aside from when we had to go rescue the mayor, that we've gotten an, an objective from Mari. So, eh, at least she's, I guess, growing into a position of power well enough. Either way, it's time for Angler Isle, which 
I recall being one of the more waterlogged levels out of the four of them. But let's just head on over to it. Also, if I recall, there's actually, uh, in the game's coding, like, an unfinished version of that world map screen that has some of the objects not colored in for some reason. I'm sorry, angle aisle, not angler. That's wrong word. All right, what's the first thing we have to draw? A climb that will help us reach new heights. This is a very interesting platform in that it's kind of an automatic spring. Uh, the climb will periodically open and close its mouth, and when it's opened, it'll thrust you high up into the air. You don't even need to press the jump button. And as for the drawing of this, well, if, you, if any of you have ever watched SpongeBob, you're able to tell the inspiration for this. Uh, I'm actually fairly proud of how this one came out. Uh, again, I kind of wish that I could draw in the middle to give it a more solid half and half look, but uh, I guess I'll just have to deal with the little space in between the two. And here's our first one. Uh, I forget if they uh, activate sometime after landing on you, but I think overall, I think it's a global timer in the level that uh, makes them work. Oh, and hey, we got our first Shadow Goo very early in this level. Part of me likes seeing collectibles like that. Like, I, I can't really call this a collectible. It's more something you destroy destroyables early in the level because it makes me feel like I'm going to have a lot more to do in a level. And our first Raposa is Indy's son. I'm free. You're awesome. I might be young, but I can still adventure with the best of them. Indy? Yeah, I guess that's our main Raposa for the stage. In fact, if you were paying attention to the Raposa slots at the level clear screen, you might be able to guess what his giant reference is based off his name alone as well. And around 60% of the Shadow Go cleared in the first section. That's pretty good. Now, I actually have trouble remembering which of the four main levels in this stage actually has the most water, and I want to say it's either this one or the next one. I know this one definitely introduces the little water sponges we just walked past, and they are basically, uh, they, whenever you're above them, they try to suck you down into them, and I have a hell of a time escaping them. Thankfully, even though their animation looks like they'll be able to do more than one shot of damage against you, they'll only damage you once, and then you'll be spat back out. And I need to use that clam. Uh, if I ha something I actually have a hard time doing is ranking the worlds on difficulty, because honestly, uh, given the way the platforming in this works, as well as your weapons and the things you draw, the levels, aside from maybe the last two in the final world, never really raise in difficulty. What raises in difficulty, more often than not, is just the boss fights. And thus... I can't really rank any of them on difficulty. It feels like, obviously, they want to start you off a bit more simple in the start, but that's only in simplicity, not in actual difficulty. Gee, Indy. wonder who he's referencing. I'm free. Now let's get out of here. I can't do a Harrison Ford impression. As though I suppose I should talk with more of a low voice and not do as much stuff like that. I really need to see Blade Runner 2049, but I really should see the first one first. Sorry, get off topic. I... I... Thank you, Harrison Ford, reminded me of that. And there's another pattern. For some reason, I call those palettes. I think it's because they actually use, like, a painter's palette for their logo. Or the, their item uh, picture. Which, uh, I guess we all have things like that that we do. Something I wish they gave you more opportunities to do in these levels, especially the later on you get is I wish they gave you a few more opportunities to build up some combos. Or maybe at least have the combos do something. Like, maybe a challenge to be like, get a 10-hit combo and you'd either get a good amount of Rappo coins or something worthwhile. But that's also some, like, stylish action games and other more combat-oriented games sticking into my mind. Because when you get down to it, Drawn to Life's main purpose is not the combat, it's the platforming combined with unique drawing elements. So I guess that's why, aside from the bosses, they never really do much with the enemies other than maybe be some minor hazards. These Shadowfish are honestly probably the most annoying enemies in the game, uh, with the exception of maybe the Acorn Throwers in World 2 and one particular enemy type in World 4. I'm not looking forward to talking about them, even though they're actually very simple enemies. Also, I like those tree leaves. I'm just, I still can't exactly tell how many of the elements in this game are designed just using the colors they give you on the color palette uh, to use at least the 25 you can use 
versus the ones that are actually in the level. They definitely use those colors a lot, particularly in, like, a lot of the other sprites, but I, I, I can't quite tell. They're most certainly more professionally put together than anything I can do. Alright, what's the next thing you have to draw? I tried it, that's a key to progression. Uh, this is more or less a glorified switch. Uh, when you tap on it, water will rise or lower. And I'm more or less just with the generic trident, partially inspired, I guess, by the one from Little Mermaid. Uh, and it's shaded accordingly. I probably could have put a gem, like, either towards the joining point of the three points of the trident or towards the pommel, but uh, I just kind of went generic with it. Yellow, orange, red, uh, and, uh, yellow, orange, and darker orange, rather, and it's done. I also probably could have outlined it to make it stand out a bit more, but, yeah, well. But yeah, tap on it. I, I realize I have holes in it still right now. And the water level raises. Thus begins our platforming. This is oddly one of the few gimmicks that gets brought back in later levels that's not like the cloud and such. And I can't entirely tell why, other than maybe for some thematic stuff that we'll see later on. Honestly, uh, what I expected to happen was when you tap the trident, it would, like, flip around entirely. Like, say there's, like, one hole that it fills for low water th and three it needs to fill for the other one. But no, it just kind of moves to the side like a generic switch lever thing. Also, it's around this point, they really start kind of throwing the boxes haphazardly into some of the levels just to give you some extra points to get some Rappo coins for some reason. Uh, it's not really even that important. You can just skip that, uh, skip it. And honestly, uh, I forget exactly how much money I have right now due to the fact I don't have the bottom screen showing. But it's enough to the point where I think if I just maybe get the coins I get through the paths I have to go in the levels anyway, I'd be able to afford both of the next major abilities. So, don't really have to worry about much there. Oh, thank you for the random starfish. I I really wish I realized where the things I could get starfish from were earlier in the uh, levels, because it, it, that's real bad, because I get real low on starfish sometimes, and I, if I had just been paying more attention, I would have been absolutely fine. Now, there's a third proposal, but I'm going to actually ignore it presently, because bonus room. <laughs> I actually like the way this song sounds sped up for some reason, and I can't quite tell why. Either way, let's rescue our third Raposa for this level. Bonk, bonk, bonk. And he's dead. I still got one more adventure in me. Because Sean Connery. Ha, 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 ha. Last, uh, Last Crusade is probably still my favorite Indiana Jones film. Uh, my least favorite is probably Temple of Doom. And I honestly, I'm I'm in a weird minority. My family looks at me weird when I say this. I actually find Raiders of the Lost Ark and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull to be roughly of the same quality. Not, they're both good, good enough films, but I I just have some issues with them narratively. Even though I think, uh, I will say Raiders of the Lost Ark has better action scenes and writing. I just think that some of the other stuff kind of balances it out. I won't get too into the topic with it. Now we need to draw a whale copter for some reason, which is almost a completely reused idea because it's more or less just the whale with. Uh, a rotor on it. Uh, I'm making it a bit more robotic looking in that it doesn't have an actual eyeball, even though you actually don't enter the whale copter itself. You just kind of get on top of it, and then it flies. At this point, uh, you control where it goes. I forget if you're using the control pad or the jump button for this, but you actually want to be careful because this is one of the few times where you can actually miss a secret token really badly. Uh, because you can't backtrack on the whale copter at all from my memory, and it's in the middle of this section, in the middle of the screen. So you want to stick around the middle because of that. Otherwise, you just got a lot of coins here. This is just a nice little set piece thing. Not really any challenge to it. You can even, actually, you can even get an extra life during it. But just stay around the center of the screen. I believe the ability... I don't think it's an ability token, but whatever secret token it is, it's coming up soon, I believe. So stay around the center of the screen, and oh wow, it actually was an ability token, so yeah, make sure you get that. And I believe with that, we are sent right to the end of the level. 
as soon as we stop drifting. Thank you. Yeah, there it is. You don't even get the signs for it. You just end the level. Uh, Angle Isle. Yeah, I guess that is probably my least favorite level out of these four. Uh, it's not even very memorable in comparison. I actually forgot this was the stage the whale helicopter was in. But hey, at least it has probably one of my favorite NPC designs, because I do like Indy's design, even though he's just not Indiana Jones. And that's another 100 Rappo coins for us once we get through all this stuff. And we're looking pretty good on the top screen there with the amount of Raposa we've rescued, too. Mind you, uh, considering that there's only one, a, a very low amount there, every single three boosts us up a significant amount. Hey, Joey. Who are you? Huh. <laughs> The name's Indy. Adventurer extraordinaire. The famous Indy? I... Uh, you're... my... hero! Get in line, kid. I've been everywhere. Never in as much trouble as at the Angler Isle, though. So it is Angler Isle, so why the hell did they say Angle? Then this... thing comes running through and rescues us. It would be nice to relax for a while, though. Who runs this place? We have a mayor. All right, kid. See you around. Dad, son, let's go. Actually, when did Crystal Skull come out? Because having a son for Indiana Jones, I think, only happened in that. Maybe a reference in the TV show? Hindi's the greatest treasure hunter alive. He's a legend. How was Angler Isle? Did you bring back any treasure? Rode a whale copter. I drew a trident. Whale copter is more impressive. The little rappers of the village love hearing about the whale helicopter. You better go check in with the mayor right now. So that's a known thing? Weird. Uh, let's see, Crystal Skull... 2008, so a year later, huh. That's actually a pretty good prediction there. Indy, is that you? Do I know you? You probably don't remember me. I watched you as a little rapper while your father was off on his adventures. I see. Well, is there room in the village for us to stay a while? We'll find somewhere. Also, I'd like to note, and Bartleby, you found the village statue page? Mari told me all about the plan. It sounds like a grand idea. Let me place the page back in the Book of Life. Take a look at the old man sprite. Notice how it's not moving? That's what I meant earlier by his north-facing sprite only has one sprite active. Indy, there's an open house near the observatory. You can take your family there for now. Thanks. Because for, because for some reason, I think it's just a plain bug. The old man sprite doesn't load all the way with this animation. I've been searching the village for the perfect spot to place the statue, and I think I found it. Meet me north of the forest gate near the, vorge, the village stage. I'll be along the main path. Alright, time for probably the most PG-13 thing I draw on this LP. Uh, more on that in a moment. Uh, that's the village stage. I can't go that way, so I guess I need to go around this way. And oh, hey, there you are. I can't. I'm stuck on mushrooms. Ah, Bartleby, welcome. What do you think? This is a fine spot. Visit to everyone. What about the creator will design? Design a statue for the village. This one took me a while to draw. Because I'm uh, going with a generic uh, cube-based statue. And I was originally going to try and, like, either do the shrug emoji... Uh, emot emoticon, rather. Yeah, ugh, I hate the word emoji. Or, uh, something like my face. But then I just decided, let's just do a middle finger for the hell of it. <laughs> I mean, it summarizes how they have me do everything, and they have done basically very little since I've gotten here. Uh, I do make one major mistake in this, and that's the first off that I outlined it all in black, and I probably should have just done a, a darker blue for that. And uh, obviously you have the line in the middle of the actual middle finger. As well as some outlining issues. A truly monumental statue. It's a nice statue. I feel inspired. What is he looking at? The great miser. They will burn your Zambania order. Come on, guys. Mari, you should let them both calm down. Hey, kid. Nice statue. Bartleby tells me that you've been looking for treasure at the beach. Have you found anything? Eh, uh, no. 
come with me. I'll give you some pointers. Ah, oh, and Marmy's alone again. Ah, Joey, you idiot. Bartleby, could you please keep an eye on Joey? All right, fine. Let's head on back to the beach. Jump cut. So you've dug around this area. Yeah, nothing. Huh. What's behind these clouds? I don't know. We can't get past them. The creator has to, has to clear them first. My instinct says we'll find something back there. Can you ask the creator to clear the clouds? Hmm. Uh, creator, can you clear the darkness? Ah, uh, now I have to go all the way back to the eternal flame. This is probably the most they have you backtrack back and forth from one area from the top of my memory, though. Aside from maybe one other thing. Actually, that sounds about accurate, too. So let's just head on back up there. Hello, Cricket. And... Tap, 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 That's a pier. Oh, so there's a house over here. Why does it already have lights on if it's been surrounded in darkness? Who left the torch on? Well, let the torch lit, rather. Come here. Sure. Take a look. Oh! Pirate ship just off screen. Okay, and something that's not filled in. Told you we'd find something, kid. Rappo! A pirate ship! What's it doing out there? I'm not sure, but it's too far out. We can't get to it. Maybe the mayor has some more information. Bartleby, could you ask the mayor about the pirate ship? I'm trying to remember, though, did in, the, in any of the Indiana Jones TV shows, because I think there was two or maybe three of them, did he have a kid in one episode? He may have for online memory. Mind you, whenever I think of TV shows for some reason based around movies, I for some reason think of Hercules when it's not. A pirate ship? There is a legend, but I never thought it to be true. Ah, that filled in thing. The creator designed for us a lighthouse. It was a Rappo statue with glowing eyes. The eyes would focus on an incoming ship. And the lighthouse would guide ships in. Okay. That's generally what lighthouses do. The lighthouse disappeared when the shadow crept in. Eventually, the dock and boathouse was consumed. I'm surprised there's still a ship out there. There was a page in the Book of Life for the lighthouse. If we could find that page, then the creator could design a new one. And we could guide the ship to the dock. Bartleby, find us the lighthouse page. Alright, time for our last main objective, aside from a boss fight in World 3. But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. And in part 15, we'll be doing just that. See you guys then.